Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Seedling Stitch Knitting Podcast. My name is Athena. I am a Chinese knitter living in Vancouver, Canada, and this is my special episode of my knitting podcast, where I will be recounting all my knitting and crochet projects in the past year, 2023. Uh, Happy New Year, and I hope you have enjoyed a happy holiday season. And I have so many projects to share with you today. I counted together there are 32 projects that I'm gonna show you and just a little bit of introduction about myself if this is the first time that you are watching my videos I started knitting in uh, September 2021 so uh, the year 2023 has been my second and second and a half year that I've been knitting and I just graduated from my PhD in 2022 and I've decided to sort of take a gap year in 2023. So in the past year I have devoted all my energy into knitting. I have worked at a local yarn store uh, as a part-time job, Wet Coast Wools, and I've also been uh, designing a lot of knitting patterns in the past year and also I have made a lot of uh, this kind of knitting podcast videos in both English and Chinese on my Chinese channel Billy Billy. Uh, so it's been a full year of knitting and crochet and creativity and designing and I'm very excited to chat about my results with you. So in this video I will start by talking about all my garment projects and then I'll move on to talk about my accessories and little toys and home decor items and for each project I will quickly talk about the pattern the yarn I've used uh, the knitting process and I'll also be talking about the varying situation like how often or how enjoyable that I like to wear these certain garments so without further ado let's begin and just a little bit of a easing into this episode I started by wearing the last sweater that I finished in 2022 and this is the wall garden sweater designed by Tokai Erika and uh, since it's not this year I will not talk about it too much but it's really beautiful so I really want to wear it and it's a good start to set up this video so here it is and now let's move on to my first uh, garment project that I finished and now it's here so let me quickly wear it so this sweater, uh, the pattern is called Gansi Ganser, coming from a Sunny Scar uh, magazine 2202 issue. And uh, this is, just let me quickly show that. I finished it in January, oh, I finished in February. And uh, it is a uh, textured knit uh, drop shoulder huge sweater. I used uh, the yarn I used is the Chinese cotton and wool blend yarn in DK weight plus one strand of drops Kate silk mohair in color North Sea. Uh, the Chinese yarn is uh, Xi Wu from Hui Gui Xian. Um, and here it is. Uh, I knitted the smallest size and uh, I have to say the yarn I used is not quite right. It's not uh, it, just due to the cotton component in it uh, and with the textured like cable stitches this one grows so much as you can see I am almost drowning in this sweater uh, so it is a beautiful sweater like when I'm wearing it I basically wear it like that uh, and the knitting process has been enjoyable like I enjoy these texture stitches they are also different so much fun of knitting it and the construction is a new one that I haven't knitted before uh, so there's some learning there uh, but as for the wearing uh, I just hope that I have used a pure wool yarn instead of like with the cotton in it and I'm thinking maybe I will gift this sweater to one of my cousins who uh, has a wider shoulder I just think like I am obviously drawing in this sweater and <laughs> I look like a little child uh, so yeah I think satisfaction level four star <laughs> instead of five star uh, all right let's move on to the next project uh, the next sweater 
is this one and I'm wearing it. Okay, this is the second sweater I finished in this year. The pattern is my own design. This is called the Pine and Fur Sweater, designed by me, Athena Liu, and the pattern is now available on Ravelry. Uh, the yarn I used is a uh, worsted weight Chinese yarn. It's like two strands of a fingering weight wool yarn. It's Hui Gui Xian Ji Dong plus one strand of their uh, mohair acrylic, a, a very cheap mohair kind of uh, lace weight yarn. Uh, that's their Hui Gui Xian Mu Yan. And it's very similar to like knitting for well, in terms of weight, it's very similar to the Knitting for Olive uh, Merino plus the Knitting for Olive Silk Mohair, that type of yarn, but uh, the quality is not as good, or at least it's a different type of yarn. It's like wool rather than merino, so it's less creamy, more structured, uh, which I actually enjoyed just due to the round yoke. Okay, the Knitting construction is a top-down uh, round yoke sweater and with some back shaping over here. Uh, I always use a different back shaping method. I don't use German short roll in my own design. I just like knit a flat pieces, in, uh, just knit a piece in the flat at the back and then I pick up stitches uh, around those the side of those little uh, bits. Uh, when I knit the sleeves. It's hard to describe in the video. If you are ever interested in different back shaping construction, feel free to check out any of my uh, garment patterns. Uh, and it's called pine and fur because I have designed this pine and fur cable pattern and these little bubbles are, are, are stands for the pine cones. So this is kind of a warm weather sweater and I wore it a lot. And if you've been following me, you know I love the color green. And this color is very intense like statement kind of green. Uh, I, I love the sweater. I, I think I, I kind of knitted it too big. Uh, in the beginning of this year, I still like the oversized design, but I think now I prefer a little bit more fitted now that I have like so many uh, oversized sweaters. So I think this design would look a bit better on me if it's one size down. Um, it's just a different style, so yeah. So that's all I want to say about this sweater. And moving on to the next one is here, and let me try it on. Okay, here it is. This one is the Jewel Scanser designed by Sennis Garn, so from the same 2202 booklet. And uh, in the original design, the yarn called for were their teen silk mohair, uh, but instead I used the Chinese acrylic mohair from, uh, it's the Yunma from Bianzhi Rensheng. Uh, and uh, this yarn is not as good as the teen silk mohair, it's not as fluffy, so it's much thicker thinner. Uh, so I had to reduce the needle size by I think a half. So I think I for the main body I used 2.75 millimeter needle instead of 3 millimeter needle. And it's knitted in a single strand of those mohair yarn so it's quite quite uh, time consuming. Uh, as for the knitting it's a top down round yoke construction and the back shaping is done uh, with some German short row here, just right here at the ribbing. Uh, and it's, it's actually the same time that I do uh, the back shaping in this method, so I have learned that. And uh, I really like the round yoke pattern. It's so beautiful and so like there's some depth and variegation. So there's some lace pattern here and there, and then there's some uh, like cable and textured pattern from here. So I think it's beautiful. And the full sweater, just because the yarn I used is not as thick as the intended yarn, so it kind of created this see-through uh, translucent effect that I kind of enjoy. That like I, I think it's even better than the intended effect. And like now, if I just wear a camisole 
uh, sometimes even darker colored camisole inside, uh, inside. It, it just have that uh, very airy uh, slightly see-through feeling that I think looks very nice. It's a very good thin layer sweater that I can wear in spring or sometimes even uh, in the like colder nights during summer. So it's a very versatile garment as well and I quite enjoy wearing it. So uh, satisfaction level 5 star. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's all I want to say for this garment and moving on to the next one. The next one I finished is this one and let me try it on. Hello! This one I'm wearing is the Kutar top designed by Sari Nordland uh, and the yarn I knitted was Knitting for All Love uh, Pure Silk. This was actually a store sample that I knitted for Wet Coast Wool so it's been displayed in the store rather than worn by me and I borrowed it here so that I can present <laughs> it uh, today. And it I only used two balls, so together I only used 100 grams, so uh, that's a very good usage of the yarn. And uh, it's very comfortable, it's very beautiful, and it's a really good yarn for the pattern. The lace uh, opened up very beautifully. Uh, I think it's the first time I work with a pure silk yarn, just like as a component, uh, and it's uh, it's drapey and it's also had a very good temperature control so it keeps me a bit warm if the weather gets colder and it keeps me cool if the weather gets hot so I really enjoyed this kind of component and I look forward to work more uh, with these sort of component like uh, silk yarn in the future uh, and uh, the lace pattern is the most complicated lace pattern that I have knitted. Uh, knitting wise, construction wise is uh, a top down construction uh, knitted in pieces for the yoke and then joined here from the inner arm and then just knitting in the round uh, and there is a double folded hem and the edge is I cord that is knitted while you do here and the strap is an I cord that you knitted uh, after you have finished the yoke and I think I really like the shape of this garment and uh, although I don't quite like lace in the front of my chest which means I will have to wear something underneath I I cannot just wear the camisole at this at, as itself, but I think in the next year I would consider knitting uh, something in the same construction but has a stockinette stitches around my chest area, like maybe just some lace in the V shape over here and more lace on the back panel. So uh, it's a very good inspiration. And oh, actually, uh, and another point is I chose the color yellow <laughs> instead of green. So that's a good step for me to go out of my comfort zone of color schemes. And I think I, I like how bright this color look on me. And uh, it also matches with any <laughs> green skirt that I own. So in next year, when I can take the garment back from the yarn store, I definitely look forward to wear it more in the next summer. So next garment is this one. And let me try it on. Okay, now this one I'm wearing is the Vine Tee designed by me and the pattern is on Ravelry already. Uh, construction wise, it is a top down uh, raglan construction uh, with an optional high split hem and the front split hem features uh, shaping and the back is just straight uh, and it features a Vine stitch pattern that runs from the raglan line uh, up from the collar until all the way to the bottom of the hem and here it's like that and uh, the short sleeve it features a double folded hem so it's it has some interesting element with the lace pattern it's actually a, a lace pattern but with a twisted stitch cables 
So there's lace pattern and twisted stitch cables and some uh, knit and pearl textures. So it's a small uh, pattern, but it's full of fun. And the yarn I used was Sandy's Garn Lina, so on a 4mm needle, DK weight, uh, linen, cotton, viscose blend yarn. So it's uh, kind of perfect for the summer. And it's just a, sort of a simple uh, t-shirt pattern. And I, I still think I needed it too oversized. I should probably choose one size now. There's now it's, I, well, it just depends on the size. It gives you a different feeling. And uh, I think for a summer and spring weather um, garment, the, the me now would prefer a more fitted t-shirt just so that it's e it's easier to pair with a skirt or a shorts like now it, it's kind of loose and I can only wear like wide open pants with it or I'll have to tuck it here just to to make it look better so satisfaction level maybe at three and a like three and a half or four so it's <laughs> it's not my uh, my favorite pieces of the year and the color I think it's kind of it looks too pale on me although it's green it's <laughs> I like green but it, it it kind of too pale for a summer and for a summer or spring weather I would prefer something brighter or more uh, statement worthy so next garment and this here and let me try it on Okay, here, this one uh, is the fine top, also designed by me, and it is in the same series, the vine series that uh, with the vine tee that I just showed you. So it features the same stitch pattern, uh, but instead it's uh, like a vest or a top kind of uh, garment. And this is a knitting wise, it's also a top down construction. Uh, the yoke is knitted separately uh, for the four stripes and then connected together to knit the front and back panel. The front and back panel are exactly the same and at the inner arm you cast on some stitches to 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 make two more uh, st st uh, strips of vines and the vine go all the way to the bottom uh, and the yarn I used uh, is a Chinese uh, pure linen yarn it's the linen 100 by uh, Lotus Yarn or uh, Shenglian Yama. And I actually knitted two samples for this design. I knitted a regular length, and this one I'm wearing is the crop length. Uh, the crop length I only used, I think, think 200 grams uh, and the longer one I used pr probably like 300 grams uh, the longer one I have gifted to my mother-in-law uh, uh, she has like a similar uh, body shape as me so uh, I'm glad we can share some garments for this design I am super satisfied super happy with it and I wore it a lot during the summer season uh, the nice thing about it is the strap is kind of wide so if I wear a bra it can fully cover it and uh, I like the I prefer the crop length and it uh, features a small negative ease so it has a very nice fit on my body uh, it covers all the places that I want to cover so it's stuck in that in the chest area uh, but it features some lace area that I'm okay to expose some skin during the summer uh, during the hottest weather I wore it a lot uh, during this year and uh, it's also the first garment that I made with a pure linen yarn and linen is so drippy and so it, the, the uh, touch to the skin is so cool so it's so comfortable to wear even like when you knit it it feels kind of rough kind of stiff uh, but when you wash it it completely transformed the garment so I really recommend anyone to try a pure linen yarn for uh, some summer knitting so I think it's an excellent component for uh, summer wears uh, so now that brings us to the next garment and let me try that on 
Okay, uh, here, this one I'm wearing is uh, actually my wedding outfit and there are two pieces, that's a top and a bottom and it is a fully crocheted piece. The pattern I used is from a Japanese knitting magazine, the Keito Dama and I knitted, uh, I crocheted the cover uh, version, the cover design of this issue and this issue is so good, it's all about wedding garments, there are like knitted and crocheted garments, it's, it's such such a beautiful issue if you can get a hold of it. Uh, I knit and crochet from a lot of Japanese patterns as well on top of English patterns and uh, if you're interested I've made a few tutorials on how to use Japanese uh, patterns, they are, there are a lot of like uh, graphs so even if you don't read the language is usable uh, and to find those you can try on Atasi uh, there are some seller who's selling uh, these sort of Japanese knitting and crochet books that I highly 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 recommend I, I really love uh, the succinct Japanese patterns and they only they usually only come in one size but it's easily adaptable okay I'm wondering about uh, going back to uh, this one actually uh, I, I, I actually made a full vlog video about the making process of this one uh, from start to finish uh, this is my uh, wedding uh, outfits uh, but it's not the actual wedding wedding so the thing was I uh, had a wedding in Vancouver just with two friends uh, in 2019 and then decide and then wanted to go back to China to have the actual wedding afterwards but then the uh, pandemic happened so I was only able to went back to China and have this uh, Chinese the big Chinese wedding in uh, 2023 uh, in September and October-ish and for that uh, I just really <laughs> I just really didn't want to buy any uh, wedding dress that I would only wear one time and the style is it just wasn't really my style and so then now I have an excuse to make a really extravagant <laughs> a complicated uh, garment for my own wedding so uh, here it is and also I chose like not a white color but uh, artichoke green color uh, just so that it's more wearable it's not just a one-time thing I can wear it in any occasion and it's two separate pieces so it is a top and a skirt and the yarn I used is the uh, Knitting for Olive Pure Silk yarn in color Dusty Artichoke as I've said. Uh, it's a crocheted garment, I crocheted in I think 2.25 millimeter crochet hooks so it's really really time consuming. I took like almost two months off just solely working on this project so it was like one of my epic projects and it was also my first uh, full crocheted garments like before I've only crocheted little um, amigurumi toys that kind of thing. Uh, and construction wise it's very very interesting. The top part uh, I cr you crochet these little flower motifs uh, from the middle and then like circle outwards and then connect you connect them together while you crochet each of them and then uh, here it's just crochet in the uh, in the p in the flat and then there are some shell buttons here uh, and for the for the skirt uh, there are just some very complicated lace patterns that I crochet in the round while I uh, adjusting the gauge. The original pattern is a very long one. It uh, is as long as it can touch uh, it can touch the ground. Uh, but I reduce a few pattern repeats just so that it's at my. Uh, 
shin <laughs> and then so just so that I can it's it's more wearable in regular occasions as well and in my trip back to China and the wedding occasion I got a lot of compliments from families and friends uh, so yeah I got a lot of wear from it and I think for the skirt the satisfaction level is five star uh, for the top it's not super wearable like I don't quite like the uh, color it flares up when I'm doing that uh, so maybe satisfaction level at three and a half star so yeah okay let's move on to my next garment and it's here and let me try it on okay here this one uh, I finished after I went back from China from my Chinese wedding and this one uh, the pattern is called Ophelia uh, from a Japanese designer Toshiki Shimada uh, from his book uh, Knitting Ecolog uh, so it's a Japanese pattern again uh, I bought the yarn kits from an online yarn shop in China uh, these are the original uh, yarn that's intended from the design and the yarn were Isagur uh, Highland wool and uh, alpaca one in many many different colors and uh, it for wearing it's more intended to wear with like a shirt a t-shirt or some kind of long sleeve uh, undergarment but here just since I'm <laughs> displaying I'll just wear it as this uh, it, it's actually not too bad <laughs> wearing like this uh, but of course yeah you would need some uh, undergarment because the armhole is kind of big uh, knitting construction wise it is knitted uh, bottom up and uh, it's a fingering weight knitting color work knitting pattern uh, in like three millimeter needle and uh, for here I have to do the sticking uh, I have a full episode uh, talking about the sticking process with some uh, cut scene of like how I actually uh, did the sticking oh, and that episode was so popular it has 100,000 views it's like 100 times more than my regular view numbers so I guess uh, probably a lot of people are interested in sticking uh, it's a very it's a very interesting technique uh, and it's not that hard as you would imagine and really I really encourage anyone who hasn't to try it on it's not that difficult uh, all right and uh, it's uh, the knit, other the knitting wise is uh, you knit in the round up to here until the color work uh, finishes and then you knit uh, in pieces uh, and then join here at the shoulder there are some uh, shoulder shaping with a short row they used the German short. Uh, they used the Japanese short row, but I just substituted with German short row. It really doesn't matter. And then you pick up stitches to knit some ribbing, and then sew some ribbing over here. And then you also do the collar. So uh, apart from the sticking, anything else is uh, kind of straightforward. Uh, and I really love the colors. I'm still up. Sorry, I'm still appreciating the colors. The design. He is, uh, he is, his color scheme is so delicate. It kind of grayed out, but it, it's just so incre incredibly interesting and full of depth in the color. And uh, the color work motif it are they're just little flowers, so it's uh, not too difficult. Uh, so it's not too difficult to remember, but it looks really great. Uh, it's, I think this one is one of my favorite garment of the year. The yarn is also, it also feels so good with the alpaca, like so dense feeling with the alpaca, uh, but also so structured with the highland wool. So uh, I, I, I think this would be my favorite garment, maybe only second to my uh, crocheted wedding skirt I don't know actually I think this is my most favorite garment of the year I would rate this one as my most favorite garment of the year yeah yeah okay <laughs> uh, all right so here's this one and I'll move on to the next garment 
and it's here and let me try it on all right so here this one is the camisole number five designed by my favorite things knitwear uh, and uh, the more interesting thing is the yarn it is a possum merino blend yarn all the way from new zealand it's uh, the yarn was happy go knitting uh, uh, huru uh, yarn and it was gifted by one of my subscribers and longtime viewer and friends uh, and here I, I really love the yarn that she picked for me. It is so, it, it, it is a little bit fluffy uh, and uh, the the color, uh, she knows me, she picked a nice color, it looks really nice on me. Uh, so uh, this pattern has been very popular uh, and it is, uh, the knitting wise, it is a top down construction with uh, two by two ribbings. And I did some modification on the side just to do some waist shaping. So um, I just want the whole garment to have a better fitting on my waist area and also it just looks a bit more interesting than pure 2x2 two two ribbings and also save some of the main yarn because I only have a uh, hundred gram uh, and then I still ran out of yarn so I used a uh, uh, Sunday by Sunday Scar uh, here a merino yarn uh, to knit this part but yeah if 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 uh, I yeah, sometimes I don't quite like the contrast. Then I'll just like wear it like this. So this way it still looks pretty good. And more more consistent. Uh, and I, I I think I like the shape of this pattern. Uh, some people would say it's not the most bra friendly pat uh, pattern as the bra stripe is uh, showing here. But I don't wear bra very often like with when regularly when I'm wearing this one I'll just like put one of uh, a, a padding here just slap the padding there so it still wears quite comfortably and it's uh, it's very warm so it's still like an autumn winter garment and then I would uh, wear a cardigan or a shirt uh, like a button down shirt to go with it and uh, my goal was to build more arm muscles in the year. So I have, <laughs> I have this much muscles. <laughs> so I'm hoping to have more arm, well, to build more arm muscles uh, in, in the in the next years. I feel my my arm is my arm is too thin. I, I want to be more powerful. I want to grow into a more powerful woman in 2024. <laughs> uh, that's all I want to say. Um, so next and last, last sweater I finished this year, uh, and let me try it on. All right, the last sweater I finished. Uh, the the pattern is called Chunky Maria's Thumb, uh, from another Sunday Scar booklet, uh, Team uh, uh, Seventy Four. The cover version. Oh, it looks almost the same as the one I knitted and I knitted the smallest, uh, I think extra small dash small size. Uh, the yarn I used instead of the uh, their brushed alpaca yarn from Sandy's Garn, I used the brushed merino yarn from Lotus Yarn or Shenglian from China. Uh, it's a super chunky gauge knitted on nine millimeter needles for the whole body part and uh, like seven or eight millimeter for the sleeve ribbings. Uh, the, it's a color work uh, top down color work round yoke pattern and I really like how striking uh, the round yoke looks. This uh, color work pattern is called Marius. I think it's one of their like Scar uh, statement designs. They have this Marius sweater in a lot of different gauges uh, and different constructions and this is just one of their round yoke one. And I, I really like how, how it looks. And uh, the, uh, the red yarn I used is from my mom from like, so like a vintage Chinese wool yarn in worsted weight and I held that in double. Uh, and the brushed merino yarn as well, it's a worsted weight yarn I held double to achieve a super bulky gauge. Uh, I 
the modification I did was only like I reduced the length for the sleeve and the whole body just to fit myself better. I think I had a very <laughs> I had a good length in it and uh, satisfaction level. I think that's one of the five star because I got a lot of wear during the Christmas season. Like in all my Christmas parties that I went to, I wore this one uh, and I wore this one when I was working at the yarn store uh, <laughs> just to you know cheer cheer the cheer the customers it was really fun and uh, I'm also proud that I tried a red color as red was not usually my color but I think uh, this shade of red like purple red fits me really well so uh, I'm looking forward to try more different colors maybe some of this red in the coming year and also I can still wear it for the spring festival in like a month or two so yay <laughs> all right that's all my garment and i'll change into something less warm and to uh, show you all my accessory and toy finish objects okay now i'm more weather appropriate then i can show you my accessory and toy and decor items so let's start with the mitten and gloves type this one i finished at the very beginning of the year the pattern is from a japanese book called uh, mitten yas uh, Mid Latovian mitten or something like that. Uh, it's a Japanese pattern book, but I think th th someone is publishing the English version very soon, so it will out be there in English in the market very soon. And this is one of the cover design. It's, it's called geometric uh, pattern or something like that. And the yarn I used was a uh, Chinese Hui uh, Guixian Dong, so it's a fingering weight wool yarn uh, and the brown is from my grandma's gift uh, it's a, like vintage fingering weight yarn from several years ago and uh, this one I have to say satisfaction level is max I've got a lot of wear in it uh, this year I started biking I did the uh, bike sharing I got a membership of the bike sharing so I've been biking a lot uh, to grocery shopping and to yarn store working at the yarn store and during the colder weather this one uh, was so helpful and I can almost feel that this part where like, I'm holding the handle of the bike it is already a little bit felted from the inside so the like the floats from the inside I can almost uh, I can almost not feel them it's almost like flat from the inside uh, the pattern is so nice the color is so nice uh, and it's so comfortable it fits my hands perfectly I think I will knit another pair of all uh, these like lateral we um mittens in the coming year so that I have more choices when I'm riding a bike so 100% happiness and the next category I'll chat about scarves I've actually only made one scarf uh, in the past year and this one is uh, is an imitation of the Alex scarf by the Knitting for Olaf designer. I basically just looked at the picture of their design and tried to figure out the construction by myself. And I've actually written a recipe version of this one, posted on my Instagram as the underline Athena and on my Ravelry page as well. Uh, it's just a basic double rib pattern it's similar to the Sophie scarf in terms of construction but just without the I-cord edging and I finished it with a Chinese yarn it's a uh, Shiku it's from the brand Shiku but the name of the yarn I could not remember at the moment but I'll uh, write that down on the screen uh, it's just like a uh, Aaron Wade uh, alpaca chinette yarn it feels so comfortable and the color is pretty nice too and I used the full 50 gram ball so <laughs> that's another plus I got a lot of wear this year I can like wear it just uh, wrapping around my neck once or 
like twice if the weather is really cold and this one is also very handy for uh, riding a bike and it looks really nice and the color matches all my clothing so happiness and satisfaction level is up on the ceiling five star it's a 100 star so yeah <laughs> and uh, next group of finished objects I'll show you some uh, bags and pouches that I made uh, the first one is a little phone pouch and uh, the pattern is from uh, a Japanese crochet bag book, a uh, Ronique crocheted bag book, uh, 3000, something like that. And this is a stitch pattern book rather than a bag book, so it shows you like a lot of uh, crochet stitch patterns that you can uh, use on uh, to crochet bags and it also teaches you some basic constructions of uh, the bags and I just used some of the patterns uh, one of the patterns in the book and uh, cast on fewer stitches to just make a little foam pouch because uh, in uh, in the summer sometimes my skirts and pants they don't have a deep pocket to hold the foam so I just thought it's more it's handier if I can uh, have a little bag so it, uh, this the yarn is a Chinese raffia yarn it's the uh, raffia yarn by the Hui Cai brand and uh, it's the first time I worked with this type of yarn and I really enjoy how like sturdy and squishy and durable this yarn feels like all very natural feeling uh, so I, I still have more raffia yarn that I want to make a bigger a crocheted bag in the coming year. Actually, I cast it on already, I just haven't finished it yet, so that's gonna be this year. Uh, and then I picked up sewing this year, and so I sew a little belt uh, instead of crochet a belt because I got lazy. <laughs> so I sewed a little uh, belt and made the pouch, so I'm very happy with it. And then another little pouch I made was a, a very simple crocheted pouch for my airpods because I got an airpods last year uh, last month no last last week a few weeks ago so and it's just like a chessboard kind of kind of uh design and uh, the pattern is from uh, the Chinese social media so you probably <laughs> wouldn't be able to find it uh, the yarn is Meng Wa Wa Er Hao Xian which is a Chinese sports weight acrylic cotton blend yarn and it's very handy and I I use it all the time since I use my airpods all the time so uh, very happy with it uh, the next group of projects are hats so here are all the hats I finished this year and the first one I finished during the summer season it is a straw hat uh, it's also like a self-drafted pattern with uh, a little lace pattern from the Ronique uh, bag book and other than that it's just <laughs> some self-drafted and I just did increases um, I did some math and did some increases and I think I I wrote down my recipe in either my Reverie project or in I talked about that in one of my previous episodes featuring this one so I don't quite remember uh, the yarn I used is a uh, paper yarn from uh, the Chinese brand Hui Gui Xian so it feels it's kind of similar to the raffia yarn uh, but it's more a bit more scratchy it, it's hard to say it's more it feels more like paper and I got a lot of wear it of uh, in it during the summer because it can cover the sunshine but i don't know the paper yarn it's you see at the beginning it's very structured and it can sh hold the shape but as time goes by and you know it's it's like that so uh, i don't know uh, i think sometimes when i spray water on it it can uh, get more structured but as I repeatedly do that more and more times it's not working anymore so I don't know if uh, it's just a problem with the paper yarn itself uh, but the design I really like it and maybe in the next year with the 
more appropriate yarn uh, I could make another one so it's it's a good item to have for summer just to cover the sunshine a little bit and it's also a nice fashion item with the black uh, ribbon <laughs> on it all right and next uh, hat so then we arrive at winter autumn I finished this one that's the Bob Lay hat uh, by Donna Smith it's one of the Shetland Wool Week yarn maybe from 29 uh, Shetland Wool Week hat pattern maybe from 2019 uh, it's an iron weight color work pattern it's so cute and I use uh, some of the yarn from my mm, wall garden so it's a Donegal tweed uh, merino yarn and then uh, the blue and the green is or from the wall garden it's a it's the British arrow ecol it's it's a it's a Japanese British wool yarn in iron weight basically and then the white yarn is from uh, my grandma it's like an acrylic mohair type of Aaron Waite yarn. I wear this a lot. It, it's so cute and I got a lot of compl compliments on it when I'm wearing it and it's also very warm. It fits me very well. I put a strand of elastic here so it always fits my hat. Uh, it always fits my head very well. All right, and next item is another Shetland Wu Week hat. It's uh, the uh, Da Crofters cap maybe from two years or three years ago uh, I don't quite remember it features this beautiful like star shape uh, color work pattern at the top and the yarn I used as you can see is some leftover yarn from my Ophelia uh, slipover project and uh, and the yarn is too thin for the pattern actually so uh, the hat ended up too small so I uh, picked up stitches around the ribbon and knitted a few rounds here so like that just so now it fits my head perfectly and this one I got a lot of wear it for this year because this one I I, in, I, in, I made it uh, with the intention of wearing it beneath my biking helmet and this year I biked a lot and during the autumn and winter it gets colder and this is a must-have piece for me uh, when I'm biking in these weathers and it and it also looks very nice just on itself um, and it keeps me warm and it's not too like not too big of a hat that I can uh, keep it anywhere and the color I think I did a great job in doing the color uh, choices it looks very mild it, it looks very different from the original design mm, and I really like it <laughs> and uh, the next piece is a balaclava uh, it's a cabled balaclava and if I'm wearing it it will look like this uh, the pattern is from a Japanese yarn shop it's the Daruma a store and they have this design as a kit so I, I managed to get the pattern from a personal source but actually they don't sell the patterns separately it's very unfortunate but yeah that's the that's the thing with <laughs> this design so knitting wise it's a bottom-up construction starting with some fisherman's ribbing and then uh, and then separate from here to knit flat with this beautiful cable pattern and then on the top there is something you knit in the flat and then you sew them up here along these uh, seam lines here and then pick up stitches around the face to knit the ribbing the yarn I use is my mom slash grandma's uh, vintage yarn it's the red worsted weight wool it's the, like the purple red one that I use for my Marius sweater and I really like the color and sometimes when I'm just biking a short distance uh, that doesn't require a helmet really so I'll just wear this one is it's like a little <laughs> it's like little red Robin Hood uh, it's 
quite bright and festive uh, and the cable pattern just looks really delicate and beautiful and even this like, Celtic cable shape on the, on the back. Uh, yeah, I think it's a piece that I'm very proud of. Okay, the next group of finished objects are socks. I've made a lot, lot of socks in 2023 and these are not all of them. <laughs> They're the only part of them. So the first one I finished is the Snowbell socks. Uh, the pattern is again from the Sandy Scarn 2202 pattern book. It features a snowbell like a snowbell flower uh, pet, uh, lace pattern and a ruffle uh, edging and construction wise it's a, a toe up with German short row heel and uh, I got a lot of wear with it and the color is nice. Uh, the yarn I used is the Chinese sock yarn, Hui Gui Xian Zhi Zu. It's very similar to the Sisu by Sandy Scar. It's just, it has a bit more acrylic and it's slightly more slippery than the Sisu. And yeah, I really love this one. And then the next one I got, uh, I finished was a series of uh, Van Gaal socks. So here I have two. So I bought some Opal Socks yarn, the Van Gogh series. Uh, so they have this series of sock yarn that uh, where the color is adapted from some of the famous Van Gogh paintings. And I got three of them. The first one was the Night Cafe Terrace. And uh, one ball is 100 grams, so I can make two pairs of socks with it when I'm doing a contrasting color with the toe and the heel. And this is the first pair I finished. And the other pair I gifted to my father-in-law. So that was a huge pair. I don't think I have a photo of it, but you can just imagine like a man's sock, but in this color, just scale this one up and that's the other one I finished. <laughs> and then uh, the second one is the, bang uh, this is the sunflower. This is the Van Gogh, Van Gogh sunflower and I used the white color as a contrasting color. Oh, and by the way, uh, for these socks, the pattern I use is my own. It's the No Frills Toe Up socks uh, on Ravelry. In the sock pattern, I provided three options. You can knit like two by two ribs, you can knit a uh, plain stockinette stitch, and you can also knit this one is a three by one ribbing, like K3, P1 ribbing, just depending on your uh, personal preference. And you can also do these uh, contrasting colors. I really enjoy doing contrasting colors um, when I'm knitting socks. All right, and then uh, there's also a third pair of these Van Gogh series featuring uh, this yarn from the uh, Tankidai bridge socks uh, and I gifted that pair to my mother-in-law so it's not with me but I can put a picture there and in this year I'll be knitting another pair for myself with the leftover yarn here and the next sock I finished is again the plain toe-up socks using my own pattern but an interesting yarn this is my Christmas socks pattern uh, no, this is the Christmas sock I always love to show how sparkly the sock is. Look, look the metallic yarn. Uh, the yarn I used is a Christmas four ply metallic uh, by Flot Sock. And I got the yarn from Wet Coast Wools. And I always love knitting socks, so I cannot resist getting them. And for this one, I use white color for the toe and cuff, uh, green color for the heel. So here it is. Uh, so that's all the socks I've knitted, I've finished it <laughs> knitting in 2023. Um, and then the next group of objects are oh, some bras. <laughs> I knitted uh, a lot of bras in this year. So the first bra object I finished is this one. Uh, 
the pattern is the basic bra by Naked Knit and I used some leftover China hemp yarn. I basically used up all the leftover of these three colors of yarn so that's, <laughs> that's why there's the color stripe and I really enjoy wearing this and just due to the yarn is very durable so I can machine wash this one. So it's a, a very enjoyable piece and I really like the pattern as well. It, uh, the fitting on me is very nice too. So this one I mounted the back stripe in a cross so it's more of a sports kind of style like that. And the second uh, bra I made uh, I made with a uh, silk cashmere yarn from China. It is the it is from the Shiko brand. Uh, the yarn name I forgot that I'll I'll print on the screen. And I held that double because it's like a lace weight yarn. It's very thin. Uh, and this is so comfortable to wear. And the yarn has a beautiful uh, sheen just due to the silk. And also due to the cashmere, it is so creamy. It feels so comfortable. On this one, I uh, did the strap in the regular mounting. And uh, I wore it a lot in the summer weather as well. So um, set his faction level also five star and then uh, I got <laughs> I, I, I got addicted to bra knitting and I was I felt confident and decided to design my own bra and this one is my own design it's knitted with uh, the ch a Chinese yarn from is the Shiku uh, the name of the yarn I forgot again. I'll, I'll print it here. It's a yarn that's very similar to the Sennis Gar uh, the Sennis Garlina, uh, just a bit thinner. So this is a sports weight bra rather than like the other two are in fingering weight. This one is in sports weight, so on 3.5 millimeter needle. And this is one of my uh, Vine series. As you can see, it features these. Uh, vine stitches that I have made a vine tee and vine top of uh, and there's the vine pattern from the front and from the side as well uh, it's like that however I haven't wrote down the pattern yet uh, just because for a bra the sizing is more complicated and um, I'm not confident enough for the grading uh, so maybe in the future I will probably just make some notes on how to make my own size and a charts for the vine pattern and if anyone wants to adapt that into their own size and was able to do so then you can try that but otherwise I I don't see myself able to write that like develop that into a full pattern in 2024 so just showing off <laughs> all right so the next group of projects are some toys and like home decor items and uh, here they are and the first one is a little polar bear this is Horatio uh, the polar bear pattern is from uh, the Picapo book it's the uh, cover feature one the yarn I used are uh, the Chinese acrylic cotton yarn the Meng Lava Er Hao Xian and also uh, some leftover stone washed by sheep heads. It's so cute. <laughs> it's so cute. I have no other words. I, I really love the design of I really love like all the designs from this book. So um, uh, yeah and it's, he's very squishy and he he looks like an alpaca because he doesn't have neck and uh, he with and he has this overall that you can uh, you can you can you can take off. <laughs> and uh, I also made another uh, animal from this book. Uh, I made the Gilbert rabbit on the cover as well. Uh, but instead of an overall, I made her a little dress uh, because this is a gift for my friend Yura. And I'll put picture because the, it has already been gifted to her. And uh, just because Yura really loves wearing red and black themed clothes, so I uh, and she also prefers uh, dresses than trousers. So uh, I 
crochet, I modified the pattern into a dress for her, and I think she really <laughs> liked the liked the gift. So that's the two objects, and then here I also made a little pumpkin uh, in the pumpkin season, October. <laughs> Ish is the everlasting pumpkin a pattern by uh, Garland. Uh, I forgot her first first name. Uh, yeah, it's all it's a free pattern on Ravelry, and I use some leftover uh, orange yarn from my grandma's gift and some uh, Donegal tweed leftover yarn for my wall garden sweater project uh, here for the stem. Uh, it is a very quick project, just like two hours, um, but it looks so cute and so squishy and so organic just because of this, all, all these are of different sizes. I think it is a, a five star uh, finish object for me as well. And the last one <laughs> of all the finished objects is a Christmas stocking. On oh, this one, I joined the advent calendar uh, by Arnie and Carlos. It is a Christmas stocking, and uh, uh, it's basic. It's like from the beginning of December, you knit six rounds each, and they reveal the color work charts uh, day by day. So it was a uh, very interesting experience doing the mysterious knit along. Uh, I have washed and blocked it so it looks much better than the last time I showed you um, and the color work pattern looks flatter and I also finished this uh, crochet handle so I can hang it on my wall. Uh, the yarn I used were some like random DK to worsted weight yarn in my stash so uh, I can't really <laughs> remember. Uh, it looks it looks so pretty and it's also very big. It's the first Christmas stocking I ever own and I think I will cherish this one for all the future Christmas to come. So yay, very excited. All right, that's a wrap. That's everything I have dated in the year 2023. And at the end of this video, I have some statistics that I would like to show you to uncover some of my knitting patterns. So I have finished 32 projects in the past year. Among them, 16 of them were accessories, 12 of them were garments, and four of them were um, toy and home decor items. And among the accessory projects, the most I've made were socks and I've made six pairs of them. And among the garden projects, the most I made were the pullover and I made six pullover as well. So pullover and socks were some of my favorite projects to knit in the past year. As for the category of the crafts, I made 24 knitting projects and 8 crochet projects. So obviously my preferred craft was knitting. Three quarters of my finished projects were in knitting. And as for yarn weight, the majority of my finished objects were in fingering weight. Um, there were 14 of them and obviously six of them were sock projects. So keep that in mind. And also I love sports weight and worsted weight as well. Uh, basically, I prefer lighter weight um, knitting than higher weight knitting. Like I rarely knit anything above worsted weight. And as for projects by finished month, uh, the my most productive month were October, where I finished five projects in total. Uh, that was when during my time when I was visiting in China. Uh, so I got a lot of free time to knit a lot of socks for families and friends. Yeah, so just basically due to socks were easier, much easier and faster for me to knit. So that's probably why October were the most productive. And also I uh, finished four projects in each month of May, June, August, and November. All right, that's a little bit of data analysis analysis from me uh, because if you followed my previous episode you know I'm starting a new job 
in dating analysis and human resources in uh, 2024, like in next week, basically. Uh, so it is a good practice for me to do a little bit of the data analysis on my own knitting projects. And if you're interested, I just made these in Excel sheets and some pivot tables. I will put a link in below in case you want to do this analysis on your own knitting projects. You can just replace the table with your own knitting and crochet data to uncover your own um, knitting preferences. Okay, I hope you have enjoyed this uh, looking back summary episode from me. Uh, and in year 2024, I look forward to share more knitting contents with you. Uh, and if you're looking for more details about my knitting, feel free to check out my uh, Instagram and my Ravelry. I share some of the, my recipes and some notes of my knitting projects on all of these platforms. And if you'd like to further support my channel, you can check out my Ravelry designer page to see if there's pattern or any of my own patterns you'd like to buy, or you can donate me on my Ko-fi page, or you can buy me some of my wishlist patterns. And uh, I thank you for all those who have supported my channel, and uh, even just by means of liking, subscribing, and comments. Your comments and your support almost warm my heart and motivates me to make more contents like this. All right, so uh, in the end of my episodes, I usually play a bit of piano on my own <laughs> piano. I don't know what song I will play yet, so I will type the song that I played uh, there on the screen. And uh, Happy New Year! I wish you a very fruitful and happy and enjoyable New Year of 2024. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye. Thank you.